All right, uh, let's get started. So that before we proceed, can you tell me that I'm not employing on your side? Can you hear me well? Can someone let me know? Can you hear me well? Because I know that I have some technical issues. Okay, okay thank you so much. All right, so let's get started. We are on day two already uh, in week five. Oh, you can't imagine like one month down. And it's super exciting that today uh, we receive news of different people in cohort A who landed their jobs. So it's like a very huge milestone to achieve. You cannot understand. Like, but I, I hope you are also happy for them and also looking forward to when our time is coming. Like, in the very next few days, time flies big time. So, yeah, I, I've been super happy this morning. And also, uh, yeah, so let's get to our business. Let's get to our business. My voice is a bit muffled. Um, okay, just give me one second and let you start. All right, can you hear me well now? Yes? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have, I have some technical issues with my microphones, but yeah, let's pass that and then get started. Uh, to those who are joining now, welcome to today's stand up. Uh, we are going to go into our normal routine of day stand up where we share our updates. What have you been up to yesterday? Uh, have you joined your groups? And also, uh, what have you been? Uh, what have you started working on for now? And uh, what are you looking forward to today? So mainly focusing on updates from yesterday. So, yeah, let's get started. Like sharp people who wants to share first. Okay, Ahmed, actually Ahmed could get, should get the award. He's always the first to share. Ahmed, we appreciate you. Go first. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Baskali. Uh, yesterday, uh, I wasn't able to do so much uh, since I faced uh, power problems, uh, electricity and this stuff. So I just... Uh, uh, read about uh, web scrubbing uh, and this morning uh, we created our group so we are talking now to see uh, what is uh, the local language that uh, our group can understand to uh, to see what, what language we will use uh, for this uh, challenge so that, that's all I have Okay, that's amazing, Ahmed. Thanks for sharing. Uh, let's hear from more people. You can raise your hands. Let's be quick with it. You just share us your updates from your side and also from your group. And that is it. Let's be quick to share. Let's be quick to share. Okay, Shayla. Shayla is on the queue, but let's get more people on the queue so that we do not wait calling out 
uh, people to be on the line. Let's raise hands, raise, raise hands. I will really keep encouraging you to do this because it's a practice in the real work world out here. To those who have worked in remote settings before, you already know that stand up is a thing. And you should you can't be wait, you can't sit and wait for the who, the product manager or your manager or the CEO to call your name to present. No, let's practice this when we still have a chance. So let's go, let's go. Raise hands. I know you are in a quiet place and ready to talk. So let's raise hands. Hello, 10 academians. Still waiting, still waiting. Okay, we have two more people on the queue. That's super amazing. We can get started now. Shayla, you can go ahead. Um, hi, good morning. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Um, okay, so I didn't make uh, much progress yesterday, but like what I did was I familiarized myself with the challenge document um, after after the presentation from Yabeva. And I had a couple of questions, so I, I wanted to know whether I could get them answered. And did he respond yet? Did you say a bell? Hello? Yes, I done. Yes. No, I'm saying I had a couple of questions about the challenge document. And I was still waiting for like us to be the group mates, but yeah. But you're already so in a group I... now. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, I'm already in a group. I've seen the list. So okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. And for the questions you were waiting to be in the group so that you can be able to share them, do you still want no, to do no. it that way? Yeah, I think I will ask them either way. So um, I wanted to ask, so there's a part for, okay, so according to what I've understood from the challenge document, we're supposed to generate a database that has that will store the scrapped data that is like the raw scrapped data then after that after we've processed the scrapped data we're going to store it as clean data then there's also we also need to store um annotated annotated data but then there's also a part i don't understand okay i don't understand like i would want clarification um when we're being told to during and in the data processing part which is stage two when we've been told filter the data where possible to minimize data contamination by english or other languages that are not your focus then the addition is an additional you may also consider creating a separate data table or category for english rich texts like i would really like if someone could explain that part for me please that's if that's possible thank you yeah, absolutely. Tim, anyone? Anyone before we call out the tutor? Anyone who have an idea about the question? Or do you want Shayla to repeat the question for you? Any reaction? Can I go ahead? Yes, here are we. Okay, good morning. So uh, for, to address what Sheila has asked first is um, you consider creating separate table uh, for English rich, rich text. So what I understood is that um, yeah, there are, there are libraries out there that, uh, that, that have English words. So if you're going to, let's say Swahili uh, is, your, is your language of concern, you need to remove the the English words, and for that, uh, for you to remove that, you may have to create a. Um, you come up with another. You, you store words that are English based. Let's say um, N NLTK has English words, but you may not have the past tense uh, uh, kind of sentences and all. And uh, for you to cover nearly everything in English, you may have to come come up with your own uh, English words. 
um, mostly uh, something like that is what I understood. Sheila? Yes? Did you get the answer? Okay. Uh, um, let me see whether I got it correctly. So Hilary, what you're saying is we're supposed to create a table that has English words so that it can be like, um, it, we can be able to recognize the English words that will be extra in our data, like that will not be part of Swahili. That's what you're trying to say. Yes, yes. Um, so for Mongo, you can come up with a collection for for those English words, and so that you can you can just be checking if that if that English word is in your text, you remove it. Okay, um, and then um, I have a final question I had forgotten to ask. Okay, thank you so much, Hilary. That 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 was very clear, and I have a last question that I forgot to ask. So basically, the entire exercise, um, we are not actually going to be fine tuning an LLM. We're actually going to generate a data set that can be used for fine tuning an LLM to um, recognize the language of our preference. Is that what we're doing? <clears throat> Maybe I can confirm this. Yes, Tina, you're right. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Uh, let's go ahead and hear from Daisy. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, yesterday I familiarized with, I researched the different um, setting tools, the three that we were introduced to. And I went through the documentation and found one. I selected Crepe and I responded and kind I've of started working with it. Uh, my question is uh, how are we going to um, work for the, because we're supposed to create to scrap data from like a lot of websites. How can we automate that instead of, you know, because uh, I'm feeling like it's taking a lot of time going to uh, writing um, the tag for going into the tag for like specific tags and it's taking a lot of time. Is there a way to do it quicker? Yeah, that's my question. Antino? Uh, yes, I don't. I didn't hear the question um, clearly. Can you restate it again, or maybe someone else have heard it? Can Can you like say it again? But I didn't. <clears throat> I like. Uh, I heard, but it was like, so. So it wasn't clear. I didn't um, understand. Daisy, can you repeat, please? Yes, I'm asking um, when we ask, when we're writing the script to to crawl the website. So, for instance, if I use expert, so then I have to like identify where like the content is. Is there a way to like um script the like the entire website with a few with few lines of code? Or maybe let, let me type it. Let me type it. No, I heard you. I heard you. Actually, uh, maybe this was like uh, what uh, um, we were discussing also last yesterday in the session, uh, the tutorial about scraping. Um, the thing is that it, dep it depends on like the websites that you are you're choosing. Um, if it's, it's going to be simple to 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 get the content you want directly from scrapping or not it's always an option to get the whole page and then later on in the cleaning step you will need to get the content you want like um because like if you w w when you store this is the raw data you're getting from scraping right and uh, you can choose to have it somewhat like um clean in a, in a sense and then uh, the cleaning step that will come later 
will be less or um, you can get the whole content from the page with all the extra stuff that you don't need and you can later on in the cleaning step you can get what you want um let's see uh, you can like uh maybe uh after the next tutorial the next tutorial is going to be about the cleaning uh, so maybe um uh like uh, you can see after if it's you, you can like it apply some um how say modular maybe let's say modular like cleaning steps that you can apply to all data you have and then you don't need to like specialize it for your specific uh, website and you can see that it's easier it's going to be easier for you to just get the whole content and then clean it afterward um i really cannot really tell you i think it's a it's a judgment call depending on your data source so um uh, yeah i don't know i basically this is my answer um the, is this um okay good uh it's good enough okay you can continue um pascal okay sure we got here to heal her okay good morning again um so yeah yesterday was 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 great uh, having the sessions um including uh, the one discussion about the challenge and and decision about scraping they were helpful and uh, I, I started on a, a few things mostly just getting a little bit of everything API and uh, pre-processing removing uh, special characters and all and also uh, writing workflows uh, CICD uh, so that at least I can go back because some part of uh, uh, the pre-processing removing English words was challenging a bit and uh, but I, um, yeah, I've done some bit of it. There are some ones that uh, really I can't, I, I can deal with them. Let's say uh, something like deep rooted, deep. Uh, so deep rooted should be like uh, should have a dash, but uh, in the text I was having, deep rooted was one word, and I tried to use uh, like diff five different modules, and I couldn't uh, remove that word uh, manually, automatically. Yeah, that is. And I'm wondering if there's a solution maybe to to those kind of words. And also about the group. Um, yeah, I saw the I saw the uh, group and um I, I'm I'm hoping we can we can we can start communicating. Uh, so uh maybe that uh the question about the different words that are let's say past tense words and uh I know that the modules don't help them in in those forms. How can we do? How can we deal, deal with that? Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, here, so just to clarify, you are talking about English words. You are trying to remove English words from your from text. Yes, I'm trying to remove. I've tried to remove several, but there are some others that are not found in the modules. And what are you using to remove the English words? Uh, I've used an NLTK. I've used English word set in Python. Uh, I've used I've used other three different modules uh, like Fast, a Fast Pace, I think, and uh, tried uh, some other two. Can't recall. Okay, so um, as far as I understand, and like like uh, we maybe we can. Um, uh, later on have a discussion and like uh, um, is this like um, my my own views my own this my mind change but uh, just like my view right now is that it's not really necessary that you completely remove English from your text the point is um, it, it is po like uh, it, for some uses it might be fine to for you to have um texts that have english within it but you just have to like um differentiate basically between the text that is completely swahili and uh, and the text that is has like swahili and english uh, mixed in um in your data set so like um, basically you have to um uh, note or like uh, 
uh, I, I, I basically yes, like uh, store them. Like uh, yes, this data set has complete, yes, completely pure Swahili or Amharic or whatever language, and then this one is mixed because for some uses, because you, you are not like um, you are creating a data set that is not only for one particular uh, NLP uh, training, not not one particular. Uh, um natural language processing uh goal you you want to create a general data set that can be used for training different um models for different things so for some i think for some of the for some of the like goals or for some of these processes it will be fine to have a data set that has like a mix in but it shouldn't be all of, of all your data so I think I would say, this is my advice for now, uh, just if you remove as much as you can, but if you cannot really remove them, just leave it and, and save that data or store that data as data that is mixed, it's not, it's not pure. Um, so I, like, I mean, if the text, I, I know this is like, it happens in a lot of when people write, naturally in a different language like if they are writing not in english language they are writing in swahili or in, in arabic or something and then they write english within so uh, i don't know it might uh, so it, it's it's like part of the meaning basically of the of what is written so i would say that okay um you wanted to say something Hillary? go ahead yeah um so uh what i meant is that the the word isn't supposed to be is not giving any meaning it's like let's say we have uh uh or perhaps it was my web scraping that was incorrect because there's a uh, like a footer that has some uh some english word uh saying let's say superstitions and that's the Uh, I don't hear anything. Do you? Um, yep, Hillary, we lost you. We, do, we lost, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I lost my connection. What I'm saying is uh, some do not add meaning and uh, mostly plural or past tense, uh, so, some sort of thing. He, um, yes, Hillary, your voice breaks, so we didn't hear what you said. Maybe you can write it down. Uh, can you hear me now, El? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, my internet uh, uh, dishes. Okay. So I was saying that uh, the, the some of the words that I have don't have meaning because they um, they're not used in that context. It's it's something that was maybe it was the title, and. Uh, uh, and I don't think it makes sense to, for it to be there. And most most of them are maybe plurals or um, or uh, different tense, past tense, future, or something like that. So it's it's hard to remove them. So you're saying that it's okay to have them, right? I'm I'm saying that it's if you cannot really remove uh, the English, uh, you might it might be like. Uh, to, it's it will be fine to have a data set that is mixed like have english within it i think that what is meant to is is actually maybe it's written in the document uh the current document but uh what you're facing the thing that you have like the words that are you need to may use a use a, a, a um, stemming or like to like return the words to their root um to recognize them maybe there are libraries for that as well but um yeah what i was saying just in general um i think sometimes the english would be mixed in in the in the in the in the context in the like in the text and it might be fine to have a part of your data set just a mixer mixture of of the language um let's say swahili and english um as as long as you have another part of your data set that is pure swahili so 
I was just saying that I think this is my my understanding so far um, that for some processes it would be fine to have the mixture but uh, let's discuss this again later on maybe after the that that cleaning um, tutorial maybe we can have another discussion about this if you don't mind is that okay Hillary yeah that's okay so like okay. one more thing that came up i understood that uh the the question sheila sheila was asking that uh it was um store the store that uh you may need to consider consider creating a separate table or category for english rich, rich text what i understood is that we we may need to like have english so that we can remove in the text we have but also uh, i'm getting that this is the so uh, like the in, let's say Swahili the Swahili text that that has many English in them so we store them separately should that be the meaning of that yes this was this is my understanding of that yes it's it is possible that you can have um, exactly a, a part of your data set can have like a mixture of languages so you can save it separately um from from the one that is pure um Uh, I think uh, if uh, Hilary is uh, done with his questions, maybe you can move on to the next person. Absolutely. Can we have more people on the queue? If you have any questions you want to ask or you want to share with us how has been yesterday, you are all welcomed. Sure, Shamil, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. So, uh, I haven't actually had uh, the presentations yesterday uh, because uh, network connections and I was a bit uh, nauseous. So, uh, I, I've had uh, actually a chance to go through the documents and the groups and everything. So. I tried asking yesterday, but I, I I probably listened to the tutorials and everything. So uh, yesterday was should be a bad day for me. Uh, so on to that, that my question my question is uh, on the group work. So uh, so are we doing uh, like the last time? Uh, like dividing tasks and everything so we are actually creating an organization that we can collaborate on or is this something that we collect on the data and do our separate things so more a little bit clarification on that maybe it was touched up on yesterday uh, just my question is on that and more technical stuff that i think i will ask on the Slack group. Sure, uh, Emtina, do you have any comment, even though uh, you might be he heading to Slack? Uh, sorry, I, I, I missed it. Sorry, I just like my attention was somewhere else. Can you repeat it for me? Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Uh, so I was just asking about the group. Yeah. Like how we should be going about it? Is it like we collect the data or identify the place where we'll be collecting? So I just want more clarification on how we should be working on a group. Okay. So um. Uh... Okay, sorry. So you have been just uh, like assigned to your group. Um, each group has like six to seven people. So the first thing you have to decide is what language you are going to um, be dealing with. Okay, so this is you have to dis discuss around your with your team members to decide which language you're going to be using. Um, and then you have to decide, of course, like what data sources you are going to collect data from. 
and uh, the rest of the of the work you have to divide of course among yourselves like you can for example like to to web scrap or like to get this data you can divide that task among people to write the script or uh talk with it um so is this like what you're asking like uh, how to go about just dividing the task or like where to start from so the like the group would be collaborating all the week on all the tasks then right yeah yes so it's the same the same that you were doing last time okay. so you, you you will be so this time like you will be sharing like you have a group uh, uh, repo and you can divide the work among yourself so you don't have, it's a lot of work actually so you have to divide it um uh like uh, some of you can start even on the other on the other tasks so you don't all focus on the same thing uh you would need uh to because you will have to an the annotation uh task you need people some a, a few maybe a few people to know the language you're using so that they can do that part um so another thing yeah this time of course you have uh, like um, an instance so you'll be working on a remote machine this is going to be assigned or going to be created today. So you'll be um, told about it later on um, today. Um, yeah, that's it. So is that like, um, does that answer your question, Abu Ah, uh, yes, yes, thank you. Great. Yeah, so uh, try to like learn from like last time experience when you're collaborating with your team members this time. This time you have more people, but please try to stay active. It's just one week. And uh, yeah, like, um, yes, Daisy. Uh, my question is about the remote machine. How will you be using them? Will they have, um, dependencies installed in them i don't know how do we work is it like a sandbox yes yeah, so uh it, it i think they will have some dependencies installed but you will be also be given at least uh at least one of the one of you in the group or maybe a few will have remote uh, sorry root root um um uh privileges so you can install things basically uh if you want so but uh, i mean more about uh uh yeah but we'll tell you more about the instances later so like if you have any questions you can ask him later so but yeah so in general you, you will have something installed but you have can install yourself what whatever you need um yeah is that that answer your question daisy Right. Okay, amazing. Uh, thank you everyone who have asked questions and to everyone who also helped to respond. Then we can call it a meeting, but before leaving, check the message of Nathaniel in all broadcasts that says add the tutors in your group channels. So remember to add Emtina, remember to add Rahmet, uh, of course, I'm not sure if you can add your bell. Yes, Emtina? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah. They, they can add, add, add uh, no, no, they can, uh, I don't know about you, but you, you should add me, Rahmat, and Nat okay. Add the, add the three of us to your, to your group. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. You heard that. You add Emtina, Rahmat, and Nathaniel. That is it. Uh, Sure, Shamil, you can go ahead before we close. So, uh, on that last note, so we already added the yeah, So it, it was mentioned that he, he was also one of on the list of tutorials. That's why we. It's, it's, fi it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's no problem. Okay. Uh, I was just saying maybe like. Uh, um, he might be just too busy to to like answer your questions on 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 the group but like um, of course you can i think it's fine to add uh, so the other thing is uh i was looking at the 
call that was uh, mm -hmm. sent. So yeah. it says to copy the contents of public SSG. So like, when I open the link, you can follow the guy to generate or anything. So are we like going on the machine we are given? Or like, I, I didn't understand where we could get the public or the private session. Ah, so um, you haven't used the remote session, remote uh, instance before, right? Um, sorry. Uh, yes, but the the. I mean, I mean, within this training, it doesn't work. Within this training, have you have you used uh, an instance before? I don't see you didn't. You haven't, right? Uh, no, no. Yeah. Uh, so this is your first time. So was a, a form shared that asked you to create an SSH key, an SSH key, right? Yeah. So, which device? My question is, which device is the SSH key generated from? Is it the uh, what was given with the domain name G one dot something? Yeah. No, so you create the SSH key on your device. So the one that you're going to access the remote the remote, uh, okay. the remote remote uh, instance from. So your computer you're using, create the SSH key there. Okay. You can follow, like, uh, there are, like, uh, instructions. You can find them everywhere for, like, uh, Ubuntu, like, depending on the OS you're using, Ubuntu, Windows, whatever. You can create the SSH, SSH key, and then uh, what the form is asking you is to share the public SSH key uh, with them, with your name and your like um, and your um, email, I think, and uh, then they will give you the access. Yeah, go ahead, Abubak. Okay, so <coughs> so like uh, I'm currently on Windows. But uh, like I'm working on virtual machine Ubuntu, so like WSL. Yeah. Uh, so, are we generating the SSH key like the SSH key on Ubuntu? Like I, I haven't actually decided. It would be on Ubuntu, so I will be generating the SSH key from Ubuntu, then send it. I think that is probably yeah. The, where where you want to access the the your your instance from? But like uh, it, it shouldn't really matter so much uh, if you use also Windows. But it's okay. It's up to you, basically, uh, to do that. Um, okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions? Before like we can go, I think uh, maybe. Okay. I I thought I saw someone raise their hand, but okay. Um, I think this was the end, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Uh, okay, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, hope you enjoy your day moving forward. Bye for now. Bye.